Recording in progress. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to episode nine of my uh, video series on YouTube, where we talk about uh, property investment. Uh, my name is Ryan Koo, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Passe Risk Eight, right? Which is a uh, project in Singapore, and I think it has some very interesting characteristics. So I thought we will do a video on this, and. Um, yeah, let me, my name is Ryan Koo, so let me introduce myself, as per usual, with my video. Director of Alpha Marketing, Ryan Steel, Skill Internal Division. So my name is Ryan. 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 Hey, uh, my name is Ryan Koo, and as per the video, uh, I am a uh, Malaysian, I'm a Singapore permanent resident, and I've been in Singapore since uh, 2009. I am a uh, property uh, investment enthusiast. I have been doing property investment since uh, 2007 uh, in Malaysia, and then in Singapore. I came to Singapore in uh, uh, 2009, and uh, I'm a registered real estate agent in both uh, Singapore uh, and Malaysia. Uh, I am most known uh, for Iskandar Malaysia. I have written two books on Iskandar Malaysia and uh, started a number of businesses in uh, Malaysia relating to real estate, uh, including short-term rentals, um, uh, property agency marketing, and um, today I also run a uh, general manager of uh, ERA Johor, right? And um, uh, I used to uh, talk about property all the time, uh, whether on the, the age, you can see I have some articles here on the age of uh, Singapore. And uh, I used to do a lot of events, uh, speaking engagements with uh, Property Guru, uh, iProperty, uh, to talk about real estate, uh, both in Singapore and in Malaysia, right? And I have transacted uh, quite a large number of transactions over the years. I'm a, a, a considered almost full-time property investor myself. I, I still own quite a lot of real estate. Um, you may, if you're the first time on my video, uh, you probably uh, may or may not have heard of me. Um, but now I'm back in Singapore. I have been in Malaysia, uh, in and out, mostly in Malaysia, uh, for the past uh, one and a half years, ever since uh, COVID, the COVID outbreak was out and borders closed and I was away from my family for a very, very long time. And uh, I just came back to Singapore uh, in June, right? And uh, to spend time with my wife and my son. My son is very young. He's only, uh, <laughs> he's only uh, uh, about 15 months old. So uh, due to family obligations, right? I have to come back and uh, family at the end of the day is the most important thing right so uh malaysia still in lockdown uh things are pretty bad in malaysia of course it's not end of the world right a lot of people uh, like to bash malaysia bash iskandar as if it's the end of the world but the great thing about property is that property is always there property doesn't disappear there's always a minimum value uh to a real estate uh, price uh, wherever in the world right it may go up it may go down but property always has a value and I'm quite confident when borders reopen and we're up with COVID. And of course, there's lots of interesting stuff going on in Malaysia right now that will bring back uh, Malaysia prices back to where we were. But in mind, it doesn't matter. Today, <laughs> today we're here to talk about something else. And uh, since I'm in Singapore, and uh, I talk about, I'll talk about Singapore a bit more, right? Because I probably haven't spoken about Singapore very, very much in the past uh, one a couple of years because uh, this kind of was very hot period. Right, and now that I'm back in Singapore, and uh, I'm going to talk about a very interesting project uh, called Pasir Ris Eight, Pasir Ris Eight, where I live. And of course, if you love, if you see my photo here and you like my son's uh, Instagram, do follow my son on uh, Instagram Anakku. <laughs> right, it's just a play on the name. Right, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, today I'm here to talk about Pasir Ris Eight. Now, uh, this is an artist impression of Pasir Ris Eight. As you can see from the photo here, uh, it's next to the MRT station. Right, this is the MRT station. Right, uh, Pasir Ris MRT. Right, and uh, of course, there are many projects in Singapore which are next to MRT station. So what's so special about Pasir Ris 8? So why out of so many projects in Singapore right now, uh, I choose to talk about this one, right? And there are a couple of interesting uh, characteristics about this project that I think uh, makes it a attractive uh, project to consider, right? And I'll go through to you in this, in this presentation, right? So exactly where's Pasir Ris, right? Um, because I know many of you uh, here or watching my video are from overseas. Uh, not necessarily from Singapore. I have had lots of feedback. Thank you very much for all my viewers who watched my videos so far and my subscribers. Um, I know many of you are not necessarily from Singapore, not necessarily from, from Malaysia. Uh, even if you are from Malaysia, you may not know exactly where Pasir Ris is. So where's Pasir Ris? Pasir Ris is actually on, uh, on this Google map. It's from the far east of uh, Singapore, right? 
So I highlighted in red where it is. It's uh, basically, um, it's a great sea. It's next to the sea, right? And it's pretty near Ch Changi Airport. So it's a pretty popular place for people who used to work in uh, Changi Airport, right? And if you look on the MRT map, you may have recalled this uh, thing called Pasir Ris when you always sit on the MRT. And Pasir Ris is basically the last station uh, on the east-west line, the green MRT line. So if you see there, the last station. So if, you, if you've been in the MRT in Singapore before on the green line, you probably have seen uh, towards Pasir Ris, right? Because that's the last station, right? So Pasir Ris is the very last station on the east-west line. So it has had an MRT station for a pretty, pretty long time. I think uh, I'm, I can't remember exactly when the green line uh, was uh, built, right? But that is easily, I think, 15, 20 years, probably more, right? Uh, that this station has been there. So Pasir Ris has always had an MRT, right? And it's a pretty growing township uh, on its own. And Pasir Ris is actually most known uh, to most Singaporeans as what we call uh, resort living, right? Because you're next to the sea, right? Uh, this is actual photo of uh, Pasir Ris Park, right? Uh, it's literally minutes away from the MRT station. So you can walk from the MRT station and get to this photo in a matter of minutes, right? And uh, I'm talking about 15 minutes, right? Walk, walking, uh, not driving. Uh, and uh, it's, so most people like equate Pasir Ris to uh, resort living, seaside living, right? And uh, chillax part of Singapore to be in, okay? So uh, that's what Pasir Ris is also very well known about. And I live in Pasir Ris, right? So I, if I didn't say it earlier, I live in Pasir Ris myself. I, I, I enjoy Pasir Ris uh, very much. Um, you know, Singapore is a dense city. So uh, sometimes uh, resort living in Singapore is something uh, you, you enjoy. Okay, so yeah. So where's Pasir Ris it, right? So uh, if you look at this map, right? This is a, a street directory Singapore map, right? And you can see I've highlighted where is the Pasir Ris MRT and the existing shopping mall, which is called White Sands. So White Sands is the mall that is basically next to the MRT station, right? So you can see that highlighted in red, right? And Pasir Ris 8 is basically the entire uh, magenta color, that red color area here, right? That is Pasir Ris 8, okay? So you can see Pasir Ris 8 is a pretty big project also adjacent to the uh, White Sands MR Mall and the Pasir Ris MRT, right? Other things is of course the Pasir Ris Park as I mentioned earlier. So above that is the sea, right? Uh, facing north towards the sea, uh, towards Johor, Right, and uh, you can also, there's also a popular uh, recreation place called Downtown East. I think many of you in Singapore know uh, where Downtown East is, so you're pretty near the Downtown East uh, as well. So Pasir Ris is basically next to an MRT station, right? So yeah, but like I said earlier, so so what, right? Many projects in Singapore are next to MRT station. So let me play a short video just to let you give an idea uh, where or how the site looks like today. So right now it's just an empty piece of land. Uh, blank empty piece of land, but I'll show you in the video. And towards the end of the video, you can see the MRT station and uh, White Sands uh, shopping mall. So this is the Pasir Ris site. That's the MRT station, and on that a big building, two way with uh, White Sands. Uh, right. So uh, it's all empty site today. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing existing on the site today. Right. So. Um, <coughs> So it's uh, three reasons to choose Pasir Ris 8, right? Which I think are unique and unique to uh, compared to many other projects in Singapore. So number one, of course, is price, right? Uh, we all want to buy something at the best price, right? Uh, value and price, right? So uh, this project, interestingly, had a very, very low uh, purchase price by the developer, right? Interestingly, they managed to buy this site at a very, very low price. I think part of it is timing. They went in at a time when Singapore market wasn't very uh, hot. Right, and the developer went in, uh, there were only three bits on this plot of land despite the attractiveness of the land. And this developer, which is all green, all green uh, properties, which is uh, basically belongs to Robert Kwok, right? Robert Kwok of uh, the Malaysian Tycoon, who is now based in uh, Hong Kong, right? So he managed to get this plot of land at a very, very good price. I'll, I'll talk about that later, right? Uh, number two is, is one of the few uh, fully integrated developments in Singapore. So this is basically a mixed development, shopping mall plus uh, uh, residential. Normally, when we say uh, mixed development, there's minimum these two components, residential and commercial. But uh, integrated development means much more. And no, when we say integrated development, I'll, talk, I'll tell you what that means later. Normally, it includes things like uh, bus interchange, uh, other public amenities like town center, libraries, you know, and uh, polyclinics by the government, stuff like that. So this is one of the few in Singapore, okay? Not just an MRT station project, right? But also a fully integrated development. So I'll talk about that as well. And number three, uh, it is a cross-island MRT interchange, okay? Not just an MRT, yeah, which is coming up to Pasir Ris, right? 
an interchange, right? Again, you will say uh, many projects in Singapore have a uh, MRT station, right? So, or, or two MRT stations, but what's so special about MRT interchange where what we mean is that two different MRT lines connect. So Pasir Ris will have a be a place where two different MRT lines uh, connect, not just the east-west line, but also the upcoming cross-island uh, MRT line. Okay, so these are the three, I think, unique factors that makes Pasir Ris 8 different and stand out compared to many other projects in Singapore. Okay, so number one, uh, price. So uh, we are, I think Singapore property market is still a very uh, price uh, sensitive market. Actually, anywhere in the world, I guess real estate is a pretty price and sensitive uh, thing. So uh, this land was won by All Green Properties, right? Which is a Robert Kwok uh, subsidiary, a developer by Robert Kwok. And they won this piece of land in uh, March 2019. So that's almost uh, two years ago, right? More than two years ago, right? And they managed to get a price of, I put that in big red, uh, 648.48 per square foot, okay? Per plot ratio, right? So mm -hmm. 648 PSF. Now, 648 PSF is high or low? It's damn low, okay? It's damn cheap, cheap okay? I mean, we were all very surprised. Uh, when they want this land at this price. So actually for a long time, a lot of people in the property industry in Singapore, right, we were looking at, oh, what is All Green going to launch this project at? Because they got it, MRT station, MRT interchange, full integrated development and managed to buy at this price, right? I mean, this is the price uh, that even pure residential condo, uh, not near MRT, also not so cheap. Uh. Okay, there are many, many instances uh, of developer who want land in Singapore, buy land in Singapore, uh, not near MRT, not near, uh, you know, uh, not called mixed development, just pure residential only, uh, pure condo only. Uh, also pay higher price than this, okay? And all green for whatever combination of luck <laughs> or savviness or business savviness managed to buy this Pasir Ris integrated site at 6 foot. And this is a white site, okay? So white site is special for those of you who know. Uh, white site basically means a developer can build anything. They can propose. I mean, not say anything, but they can propose anything, right? And uh, of course, there are some guidelines given, but... By the by the in, in the land sale, but so you the idea normally white side is that you build a, a mixed development, right? There'll be some residential, some commercial, and there may be other some requirements that the that you already put in. So and so that's what a white side is. And so a developer must submit not only a price when they want to buy a white side, but also a concept. That's why we have we call this a dual envelope because there's two envelopes where you submit. One is for the price, one is for the design, right? So the government has proved this design, right? The Singapore government, and they're happy design. And uh, that's what we call a dual envelope site. So it's a special, special thing, right? 648 per square foot okay, land price for a white site in Singapore. I think that's amazing uh, that uh, it happened, right? So sometimes, I won't call it a miracle, right? but a near miracle that a developer managed to get this kind of site, this kind of prime site for this type of price. Okay, so, but you can say, Ryan, how do I know 64 is cheap, right? I don't, I don't know, let's say if you're not familiar, how do I know 64 is cheap? So let's do a bit of comparison, all right? So the next table, Okay, let me move my thing a little bit, right? So the next table, now this, in this table, right? Maybe you need a bit of time to absorb, right? Uh, I've highlighted all the different projects in Singapore where are mixed development, right? That means they are commercial and residential or fully integrated development. That means they are also uh, MRT station with MRT interchange, with bus interchange and all that, right? Or they are residential on top of a MRT, on top of a mall, right? And you can see these are all, uh, a, a good list. Uh. I maybe missed out one or two, right? I think I missed Fire Debar one. But uh, this table shows you all the different projects and the date of the land award, right? Since the first integrated development in Singapore, which is Compass Heights in 1999. So in 1999, uh, this Compass Heights was won by the developer for only 141 per square foot. Uh. So that's, of course, today you cannot buy anything for 141 per square foot, uh, right? Uh, that's, that's 20 years ago price, right? But, but you can see, okay, uh, what constitutes cheap and what constitutes expensive, right? i give you an example, right? Uh, uh, Watertown, right? Watertown, which is in 2011, Pungol. Uh, uh, now, of course, it's the, the, the a big mall and a nice, a very beautiful water park there, right? But this land was bought by Far East, right, in 2011, and they paid 753 per square foot, okay? 753 per square foot. And this is 2011, yeah? This is 10 years ago. 10 years ago, okay? and uh, North Park, right, uh, by Fraser's, North Park Extensions, this is in 2013, uh, they paid 1077 PSF. Okay, 1077 PSF. So uh, in theory, uh, in theory, uh, all green, uh, when they buy Pasir Ris 8, right, which is of course the third bottom one, right, they bought this Portland uh, 640 per square foot. Uh, it's like 10 years ago price, you know. 
you can say like 10 years ago price, you can call it 10 years ago, 15 years ago, a years ago price or, or, or eight years ago price, but they buy this price, uh, it's like almost 10 years ago price, okay? Okay, for integrated <laughs> development, okay? And you can see some more recent equivalents are uh, like uh, Woolly Residences in Bidadari, right? Uh, they paid 1181, right? Uh, Holland Village, of course, is damn expensive. They bought at one, uh, 1888, right? And um, the another probably nearer comparison is uh, Sengkang Grand, which is in Bangkok. They paid 923, right? Which was a year earlier than uh, than, uh, than Pacific 8. They, bought, they got the land in 2018, right? They are now launching around rough, roughly 1,007 per square foot, right? On our median, you can see here, I put that data as well. So, uh, Pacific Series 8, uh, all green buy 6 for it. So definitely, they buy cheap. That is for sure. Right? Developer definitely got the land cheap. Right? And again, this is uh, almost apple to apple comparison. I'm only showing uh, on this table, right? Mixed development, service residential plus commercial, right? With MRT, right? In, in these cases, they all have MRT station, right? Uh, okay, Holland, yeah, Holland has an MRT, but not really on top of it. Of course, I included one Tanamera residential site, right? This one also is pure residential, but this site is uh, also next to MRT station, right? So, but it's not integrated development as it has no, it has no uh, mix, it has no commercial component, okay? But these are all very similar in the sense that they're all pretty near MRT station, right? Or on top of MRT station, all integrated development, right? And you can see on this table, uh, considering that All Green only bought this site two years, uh, two years ago, right? 2019, uh, they got it 648. It's definitely cheap, cheap, okay? Cannot, cannot deny this one. They bought the land cheap, okay? So the big question, <laughs> the big question is uh, what will be a fair price, right? If you buy 648 and you factor in construction, construction costs and a reasonable profit, uh, what is a fair price for Pass Series 8, okay? And uh, there are a lot of things to consider. Number one is developer buy the land cheap doesn't mean they will sell cheap. Right. Uh, I mean, if you are the developer, imagine you put yourself in Robocop shoes uh, or the management of all green properties, right? You are laughing to the bank because you have a lot of margin to play price, right? But it doesn't mean that they have to sell cheap. So the, the big question that a lot of us as in the property industry or as agents uh, or myself in ERA, right? We are thinking, so what would they sell, right? If they want to sell fast, of course, they sell a bit cheaper, right? And they can clear all the units up quickly. They don't have that many units, only about 400 plus units. So it's not a big project in that sense, right? 400 plus units is not a lot, right? So they can, uh, if they want to be fast, let go cheap, clear everything fast. The other thing is they may consider what are other integrated developments nearby in Singapore selling today, and they just benchmark to that, right? If, if uh, Sengkang Grand is selling 1,007, then I also sell 7,007, right? Uh, not wrong, right? Not wrong. That's also a correct way as a developer to price a project. Right, uh, see what the competition is selling. I don't care the competition bought the land price higher, but if they are selling that price and they can sell, I just follow them. Uh, right, so that is also one way or one approach, uh, Pass Series 8 may take. Right, uh, and uh, yeah, so this is a big question, right? Cannot be answered on the video like this, right? Um, in you know, I mean, it's, it's a difficult question, right? And we will not know until nearer to the launch date. Is you know, like in Singapore, all project prices are not really, really revealed. Until until near to it, but my guesstimate, my guess uh, right is uh thousand seven or lower. My guess, my guess. This is a price that the developer will likely end up with. My guess, right? Uh, one thousand seven per square foot or lower, and 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 this is the, the range, right? We we don't know for sure, right? Uh, we no one knows at this point other than the developer. I think the developer also don't know, right? At this stage, is they still uh tinkering a bit with the price, <laughs> right? Um, uh, until they make a decision, right? But I, my guess would be thousand per square foot, or a bit lower, uh, than that, right? If it goes lower, then I think this is a sure buy, uh, project, right? Considering prices in Singapore today, right? Um, yeah, okay. But whatever it is, uh, all green have definitely done well because they have with a, such a good project this at this price. So let, let me move on. Uh, so just now we talk about price. So the second point is, uh. Integrated development. You say, Ryan, what do you mean by integrated development? It says, what, what do you mean? Okay, so actually there's no real uh, official definition. Okay, what integrated development, right? So this is something that, uh, because in Singapore, we have so many uh, uh, projects on shopping, on MRT and shopping mall today, right? It's, it's very common. Right? I mean, in Singapore, I think that's, that's very common. But when you say, uh, and, we, and we normally we call it mixed development, right? So what, what do we mean by fully integrated development? And, and in this slide, we try to explain. Uh, our definition, right? So mixed development, yes, there's commercial, uh, shopping mall, but sometimes they are sold as uh, strata retail. There are some projects in, in Singapore where 
yes, there is a retail next to the MRT, but they are not held by the developer. They sold it as Strata, right? And you know, the issue with that is normally sometimes you cannot control the tenant mix. There's very poor marketing from the, from the shopping mall because there's no unified uh, ownership. Right, and you have a lot of uh, the mall becomes very specified to a certain type of use, right? Like a lot of uh, you know, employment agency, a lot of massage parlor, you know, this this happens quite a fair bit, right? Uh, when projects are sold as strata retail, the shopping mall, right? So that's uh, so may be strata be uh, mall, may not be strata mall, and then there's always a residential component, right? MRT station, but MRT station may not necessarily be uh, the same plot land. It could be next door, it could be across the street, right? This we also call mixed development because you're pretty near MRT, right? And examples given below, right? Uh, you know, Junction 9, Longhouse, Quest, Wisteria, KT Mall, right? Bukit Dima, right? So these are examples of what we mean by mixed development. Uh, and a fully integrated development is the difference. Shopping mall, and when we say shopping mall, we mean one owner. Right, and this when one owner means people like Capital Land, CDL, where they will park the mall eventually into a REIT, right? Things like that, right? Uh, there's always a residential component, MRT station built in into the same site, right? With a not typically bus inter interchange, and this bus interchange has to be uh, mandated by government, of course. And uh, Magama normally when they do this, they will they have other facilities, right? Like public uh, library, polyclinic hooker center, right? Uh, community center. So, what are examples of what we mean by fully integrated development? Right, uh, Bedok Residences, right, I think that's a very good example, Bedok Residences, uh, Watertown, right, Watertown in uh, in Pungo, right, uh, Centuries, which is uh, uh, Jurong, Jurong West, right, uh, North Park in Yishun, yes, all these are examples of full integrated development. Now, if you classify it like this, right, in Singapore, right, there's actually only nine uh, projects of this standard, fully integrated development, right, which as per the slide here, uh, I show you, there's only nine. If you think about it in that way, there's only nine. So they are not just a typical mixed development, they're above a typical mixed development because they have more components, more integrated, right? Uh, and nine, right? Uh, some examples are given earlier and some are, are on this slide. So Park Series 8 technically also falls into this, right? And when you look at the rarity of this, right? 1.3% uh, of all private residential units in Singapore are in an integrated development, okay? Only 1.3%. Right, uh, we did the math, right? Uh, ERA did the math, and I think it's a good point to highlight. If you think about it that way, uh, only 1.3% of all condos or residential units, uh, private residential units, are in integrated development, and out of 122 MRTs in Singapore, uh, only nine are part of a fully integrated development. So, Pass Series 8 is a tenth uh, such fully integrated development in Singapore, right? Because we will have a bus interchange. Right, with the Pass Series 8 extension right, uh, on Pass Series MRT, there will be a, uh, a bus interchange, which is actually, actually has already started construction. Right? Uh, there will be two MRTs through the current east-west line, upcoming cross rail, uh, cross island line, right? and the new shopping mall uh, underneath Pass Series 8 basically will be twice the size of the existing uh, White Sands Mall. Right? So you, uh, it will become a very, very big interchange uh, shopping uh, destination in itself in Pass Series, right? and this will be the 10th only the tenth such integrated development in Singapore. So that gives it a bit of rarity again. So um, how well do such integrated developments perform? And, and we can compare it on many angles. So in Singapore, and uh, ERA has done this uh, beautiful set of slides on this, which I'm using here. Uh, you can compare, like the first example is North Park in Yishun. So North Park is fully integrated development in Yishun. Sits on the big shopping mall, there's bus interchange, there's a lot of other facilities, amenities there. And you compare North Park to a project like Symphony Suites, which is uh, away. From MRT, Symphony Suites is not next to MRT station, and you can see there's a big uh, difference in rent, uh, rentability, right? Rental rate for North Park, right? And it's even in price appreciation, uh, North Park residences has done well over the years, right? And practically all the projects we've seen in North Park have uh, been uh, profitable, profitable, right? In North Park, right? And if you look at another example, Bedok Residences, Bedok Residences was launched in 2013. Uh, there was a long queue. It came out the papers, very famous because again, everybody realized, hey, there's only very few projects in Singapore uh, which are fully integrated. Although at the time, we probably didn't talk about it in that sense. All right? I was around in 2013 when Bedok Residences was launched, right? And it sold out pretty fast. I mean, we all as agent, I mean, <laughs> you missed out, you missed out, right? But um, again, Bedok Residences, if you compare to Waterfront Isle, which is the, the one near the Bedok Reservoir, right? Not near MRT, uh, not near to Bedok, uh, MRT, right? So uh, again, you can see a difference in rentability, right? And you can see that Bedok residences have generally appreciated over the years, right? And again, uh, pretty much all owners have uh, made money, right? Uh, on Bedok residences, no one. I mean, uh, 
I mean, I didn't check in full, but I mean, practically, you don't see anyone losing money on the Dover census, right? And again, you compare Helian, this one's in, uh, in uh, 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 Bukit Panjang area, right? Helian, again, is on MRT station, fully integrated compared to Eco Sanctuary Skywoods, which are not near MRT. Uh, definitely, Helian rents better because they're on the MRT station and price appreciation also has done very well. Again, uh, one more centuries, uh, Jurong West, uh, beautiful shopping mall in Jurong West, right? Uh, centuries is just right on top of it, bus station, interchange downstairs, uh, integrated development, uh, price appreciation has done well, right? And you can see profitability as well. Centuries, of course, make a lot of money because this is a pretty old project. Uh, and you can see owner, owner profits are very high uh, for centuries, okay? So that's the second point, right? Pacific eight is only the tenth such integrated development in Singapore. So next one is of course cross uh, island line. So uh, cross island line, I mean the first, uh, the first phase of the cross island line has been more or less uh, determined, right? And you can see here that Pasiris is part of it. So Pasiris will be an interchange station because uh, Pasiris is already has existing MRT East West line. So Pasiris will become inter interchange station now, uh, fifty kilometers, right? Uh, and actually cross rail island line is something like circle line, right? It will interchange with many of the existing uh, MRT lines in Singapore, right? And uh, first phase to be completed by 2029, which is not very far away, only we're talking about uh, seven years, uh, seven, eight years from now, right? Uh, that's not too long, right? And if you look at it, uh, the important thing about Pass Series 8 when you become a part of this cross island line is that uh, you can go to Changi, right? And the other key thing is you notice there's only three stations to Aogang, right? Today, if you want to get to Algang, there's a bit of a, you can't go direct because you have to go through, uh, to go the purple line, purple line, then you can get to Algang, right? So there's a bit of a difference. Most people take bus to get there, right? And eventually you see it connects to Ang Mokyo as well, right? And from Ang Mokyo, it's only like uh, six stations to get to Ang Mokyo. Now, and maybe probably it's better to show it in terms of uh, time savings, right? But uh, this also starts to show you that LTE has awarded the station, right? Uh, there's a bit of uh, hoarding going up right now at the Pasir Ris because they have started to plan the station for the cross island line, right? This has been awarded to a Korean company uh, to build the Pasir Ris uh, cross island line station. This contract was awarded uh, earlier this year in April, right? Only a couple of months ago, right? And uh, this is the cross island line based on uh, the LTA. Uh, this is taken off uh, one map, right? You can see the green color portion is where the, uh, the green color portion is where the cross rail line will be, right? So the station basically straddles uh, the MRT station, right? And uh, it'll be underground, right? And you can see Pasiris 8, I've highlighted in red. That is the Pasiris 8 project location, right? So you integrate not only to one MRT, but two uh, MRT. And this basically becomes an MRT interchange. I live somewhere over here. I live uh, in uh, Dines, which is just across the road, right? So um, I will also definitely benefit from this as well. We're very happy to hear about this, right? So uh, cross island line. Right, so uh, these are the time savings. So getting to Amokyo, you will save 25 minutes. Getting to uh, Defu, you will save uh, 15 minutes, right? Uh, because you cut through, uh, this will remove a lot of the bus. Uh, normally to get these places now, you get unit bus, right? But you, because the MRT itself is not direct, but with the cross island line, uh, you will make a lot of these destinations much closer uh, via uh, MRT, okay? So the other part of the cross island line, right? Which is also, also the Pungo extension, uh, by 2031. Now this cuts across the Elias, which is basically somewhere in front of IKEA opposite the, the, the TPE, the highway, right? And it connects also to Pungo itself. So now today, if you want to get to Pungo from Pasiris or even Tampines, right? It's quite troublesome. You have to take a bus, right? Uh, there's a very popular, popular bus route used by a lot of people because the you, you it, it doesn't make sense to take the, the Northeast line all the way to go to Strangoon and come back down to, to, to the green line and go back up to Japanese, doesn't make sense. So a lot of people use the bus and the TPE, uh, through the TPE highway to get to uh, Pungol, Tampanese, Pasiris, that route, right? So this will be uh, resolved, this issue will be resolved by 2031. Through the Pungol extension, there'll be uh, two stations to get from Pasiris to Pungol. Now, as I'm sure many of you know, Pungol is a very, very big township today. Many, many young couples live there, families and stuff. Right, and this will integrate Pungo closer to Pasir Ris because anyhow, uh, you know they are they are, they're pretty integrated. I mean they are they're pretty close anyway. Just that there has no direct MRT connection. So with this, uh, is another big booster to Pasir Ris and also indirectly to Pungo is that we link, uh, together through the cross island line. So I think the cross island line, uh, is great that it resolves some of these, uh, very basic and actually yeah it makes a, a lot of logic to fix all these issues 
by adding these uh, MRT stations, right, to fix some of the shortcomings of the earlier lines that we built in Singapore, right? So it's a beautiful thing to have. I think it makes Pasir Ris a very, very big, uh, a big plus to Pasir Ris 8. So it makes Pasir Ris 8 an MRT interchange, not just an MRT station, an MRT interchange, right? So what are MRT interchanges in Singapore, right? Um, give some examples, right? So MRT interchange means there's more than one line interconnecting, right? Of course, not all of the MRT interchanges in Singapore have residential projects. There are a number of them that don't, right? But those that do, examples like Dobie God, Bishan, right? Bishan has uh, multiple lines, the red line and the orange the circle line, uh, Paya Lebar, right? Uh, Jurong East, yeah, Jurong East is a big interchange, right? Serangoon, uh, Buona Vista as well now. You know? so all, if you notice, you think about all this and you compare to equivalence on the right, which is nearby, but just MRT station, but they're not interchanged. They are just a solo station. They got no multiple lines, right? Like Bras Basa, Amokyo, right? You compare Bras Basa to Dobby God, they're pretty near, right? But Bras Basa is not as one, right? Compared to Dobby God. Amokyo compared to Bishan, right? Amokyo, of course, is a very happening place, but Amokyo and Bishan definitely is a different level in terms of the, 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 the people movement, right? Same thing, Geylang, Pai Leba, Clementi to Jurong. Clementi is also a damn busy place, but if you think about it, Jurong East today is a much, uh, uh, what do you call it? Much hot area in a sense due to the MRT interchange effect. Same thing for Tompasi, Serangoon, Dover, Bonista, right? So, so similarly, Pasir Ris 8, right? With the upcoming interchange, I suspect uh, you will make it equivalent to Tampines, maybe even more, right? Tampines today also has an interchange by itself because of the the, um, the downtown line, right? Uh, but not, uh, yeah, the downtown line. But uh, with Pasir Ris 8 and upcoming cross island line, I think Pasir Ris will also move into that level of uh, hotness, right? And human traffic and the desirability to live in Pasir Ris itself, right? So this is an important thing, cross island line, uh, not too far ahead, right? Only seven, eight years from now for the first phase. And then of course, in the two years after that, for the connection to Punggol and the big beneficiary is definitely uh, Pasir Ris, okay? So uh, other reasons there, I mean, um, if you hear some other agents speaking or other uh, property talks, right? They will talk about uh, seven reasons, nine reasons, 20 reasons, right? But I think of course the other, uh, to me that three is the most important, uh, the one that I talk about, right? Price. Land price by uh, all green. Second is the uh, the fully integrated development effect, right? There's only 10 such projects in Singapore. Third is the cross island line interchange, uh, not just a station, interchange, right? And of course, there are other reasons. I mean, the, the most basic reason to live in Pasir Ris 8 is to be next to the sea, uh, right? And uh, in a low density area uh, compared to other parts of Singapore and green living, resort living. Of course, um, there are other things that the Singapore government has planned in the master plan, such as a new town center, uh, hawker centers and stuff. I won't talk about that too much because uh, that's by the Singapore government, right? And it happens, of Singapore government does everything that they want to say, right? Pretty much everything. But I mean, uh, I'm not going to go to that, that in, into that too detail. But of course, if you look at the Singapore master plan, there's a lot of work being planned as well for passives in that sense, right? But um, to me, those three points earlier right, are the main key points that stand out. And I, I, I dare you to compare many other projects in Singapore today and you will not find uh, three such unique factors for projects such as this, right? So I hope you enjoyed my presentation, right? And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me about Pasir Ris 8. Um, I think if you look around the market today, the agents have started the marketing process for this. I think there's a show flat available uh, next to uh, Downtown East in Pasir Ris itself. So if you're interested, right, uh, we can help with that. I do, I'm also a Singapore ERA agent and we can arrange uh, viewings for the show flat. Uh, more information, if you need more information about the projects, the layout plans, uh, things like that uh, we i uh, have all those as well and uh you don't have to talk about Pacific eight if you enjoy this video we can talk about singapore property market in general right um of course uh, singapore has had a good run this one two years because uh despite covid right or perhaps because of covid right <laughs> I, I have my own theory why because of covid property market singapore has done better right of course the best thing about buying Pacific eight is you become my neighbor right i'm a great neighbor to be with and <laughs> and it's a nice place to stay i enjoy Pacific very much and uh uh, I, I've been here for many years, right? My wife and my son. It's a great place for my kids, right? And um, right, I'll be here for a long time. So um, hope you uh, drop us a comment, right, on our on our on our YouTube below. If you like what we're doing in these videos, do uh like, subscribe, uh, follow my YouTube page. We talk about Singapore and Malaysia and any of the properties topics that we find interesting to talk about. Uh, I'm happy to be in Singapore again, and uh, I hope this video is useful to you. And you can always drop me a message at 1261626, right? And we have a great Facebook group where we talk about property investment, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and other countries. 
and uh, feel free to email me as well. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and do drop me a text if you're interested in Pass Series 8. We are, of course, always uh, ready to hear from you. And I think this will be a hot selling project, right? Of course, the big the big factor that everyone's looking to look out for is the price, the final price of developer release. I think that will determine whether this project is a day one sold out or will it take a month or will it take six months. But this project will definitely clear because there are not that many units anyway, only 400 plus units. Uh, but I think it's definitely a good buy uh, if you can get the 1,007 per square foot and below. Uh, you will not do too wrong in the long run. Of course, the lower, the better, right? And definitely the developer has a lot of uh, margin to do a lower price. So uh, definitely the next project to look out for. But Singapore has had a minor uh, lockdown recently, but I think opening up is happening again. So uh, when the project does launch, we expect it, the, the balloting process will happen end of July. So you only have about uh, one month from the date of this video to uh, put your interest in. Find out more, visit the show flat, and I uh, hope you find me, Ryan Ku, right, ERA, and uh, I'm more than happy to serve you and do our best to make sure that you get a good unit and make the best decision you can. Thank you very much.